Until now, we had only um, descriptive statistics or uh, explorative statistics, and in this video we start with the hard uh, inductive uh, in statistics, so statistical tests, hypothesis tests, and we will start with a um, non-parametric test, which is the kolmogorov smirnov test, and in this video I also would like to use R to explain you how you can do that by hand without just using the, the function that's inbuilt there, but we also will see the function later on. I'm not too sure in how many other videos we will follow that approach, but here it's uh, quite convenient because the test, the, the basic idea of the test is quite simple and we can show that um, also in this way. So we need some data and I use here a data set from burials, from Bronx Age burials, where we have the age of the individuals given in, in um, anthropological classes, infants 1, infants 2, infants, not infants, juvenile, and so on. And we have a second uh, characteristics here, characteristic, a second variable that's richness, so if this was a rich grave or a poor grave. However, the people decided that these are rich and the other were poor graves. The thing is, the komogorov smirnov test as such is a non-parametric test that means it doesn't have so many um, expectations on the data. Um, it only needs one variable that's at least ordinal scaled, so a data set where you can order the values within that. And in case of the two sample test, which we have, we need one variable with which we can identify one group or the other, so a grouping variable, and that's in this case it's the richness. So ordinal scale is the age, we can say that infants 1 is younger than infants 2, or the other way around, that infants 2 is older than infants 1, and with richness we just distinguish the burials, although rich and poor might also be called uh, ordinal variables, but in this case we just use that as nominal grouping variable here. Um, yeah. So the question from this data set on this data set could be um, are people, have people of, with poor graves, have they died younger? So that we can expect that people in rich graves also were richer in life, better equipped, and had better chance to reach higher ages than the poor ones. Um, okay, let's switch to R to answer our question. And at first I have to set my working directory. I can check where I am with the get wd command and I'm in our general project. The data set that we need to have is in session 4, no, in session 5. And I use the Greber BZ very bronze age factor data set here. So I can read that in by saying read CSV um, Greber BZ factor. And you can see this is malformatted because it's a continental CSV data set. I have to add the two here. And now we have the columns correctly separated, but we have this annoying first column here which just gives us the uh, consecutive number so this, uh, we can immediately use that as row names so I add row names equal to one and now we have the data set as we like to have it and I put that into burial uh, burials into the variable here okay here we have the data set um, we can look at the distribution of the age classes towards the uh, richness classes by using the table command. And when I do that, I can see that we have here poor and rich graves and in respect to the age we have adult infants and so on. You can realize that this um, column here is not very well um, ordered because we have adult, infants 1, and so on. And that's why um, R sees that as a factor variable, which it is, and it sorts the factors uh, alphabetically if it has no other information. 
and to have that more useful ordered we have to reorder this factor so what we have to do is to reorder the factor itself or make a new factor uh, and put that into the variable which already has the right order to do that i can use the command factor of burial dollar h and if i just do that i get the same order of the factors out so i haven't done anything except for putting a factor variable as a factor variable which it already is but we can add some additional informations to that for example giving the levels in the right order so the levels of our factor variable should be at first we start with infants one then of course infants two then juvenile oops then adult then mature and then senile i also have to put that into quotation marks and if i get this i might have a typo somewhere mature is without the e so and senile is without also without the e so now we have and juvenile is also without the e okay now we have everything here without the na values here so now we have our levels ordered in the right way and you can see that down here infants one infants two juvenile adult mature senile like it should be and if i put that again into the original variable and repeat the table command you can see that now here the factor variable is ordered in the right way um, currently we just reordered the factor variable but we didn't use and we didn't specify that's actually an ordinal variable we could also do that in our case it doesn't matter so much but we can for example just take that and instead of saying factor we say ordered and when i then look at the variable again you can see before we had just the levels one after the other and now we have this smaller sign which means now we have an ordered factor here which implement uh, Im implies that this is an ordinal variable later on in the common golf smooth test we have to use uh, numbers instead of the actual ordered factor because it expects a numerical vector but it doesn't matter so much now okay um now we have this uh these variables rescaled and the idea is of the kolmogorov sonoff test we have the distributions here of the numbers and our question was um is our rich graves did rich graves uh, the individuals in rich graves did they reach different ages than those in the poor graves so we expect the rich graves to be older but we keep that open so we just want to compare these two distributions and if we look at the numbers themselves of course they are different um, in absolute terms but if we look at the number of burials in each age class we can see that it's also different so we have to scale them that they have the same uh, range here we have to make percentages out of them and with that we can then compare the whole data set and to do so um, or one step back the idea of the kolmogorov sumerov test is to identify if there's a difference between the age classes that's big enough that we can speak of a non-random process that the richness really influences the distribution onto the different age classes so if there is a difference between within one line that's big enough that we have to speak from different processes going on here so to come up with some percentage values we can use our burial table in the beginning 
and if we select just the first column then we get only the poor graves if we select the second column we get the rich graves and of course we can turn that into percentages by making dividing that by the sum so if i would do this divided by the sum of this i get percentages but we will use a different approach that's the prop table which does that for us so if i paste in here my first vector i get the same numbers here so this also divides the individual data by the sum and we can do the same for the second column and now we can directly um, spot some difference here you can for example see that um, much more individuals were adult when they were dying than uh, oh, oh yes um, than in the situation with, with the witch graves but we have to compare that in respect to the um, age classes below so we have to make a cumulative sum of the individual age classes and compare that cumulative sum means uh, infants one the first class gets the value it has the class one above the one uh, class one older um, the cumulative sum is its actual value plus all the values below so plus infants one the cumulative sum of the juvenile class is its actual value plus infants two and infants one and so on until to senile where we get uh, a one because every individual has died at senile ages or younger okay the, com the command for cum cumulative sum is cum sum and if i just paste that in here you can see here four seven uh, eight percent of uh, the individuals died in uh, infants one or younger there is no younger so in infants one 18 percent died at infants two or younger and mature or younger 96 percent had already died there and the same for the rich graves gives us a strong difference here so in the rich uh, in the poor graves these are actually the poor graves all right yeah. so in case of the poor graves already 50 percent of the individuals had died at age um, juvenile or younger so we can see already a difference here but is this a significant difference that's the question and we have to answer that by using the chromograph Smirnoff test and compare this difference to a difference that we um, define as threshold if the difference is larger than that we assume that there is a statistical significant difference if it's smaller than that um, we can't say that there's a statistical significant difference so the first thing i do is to put these data into a variable so rich edf uh, as empirical density function should be that cumulative sum and poor edf should be the second one okay now we can plot for example the poor the distribution or the um, values of the poor graves and i use a um, step plot for that now we can see how the age profile the death profile uh, gets to one and um, i can add lines for the rich graves type should also be stepwise and um, color that red and now we can see that here are already some difference uh, going on so most of the rich graves um, there are lesser uh, amount of individuals have died there 
the rich graves against the poor ones. Um, to make that a bit nicer, I could add here, turn that around. So I add here, um, I make this the x-axis and this the y-axis with the different age classes. And I could add then the lines in the same way. Now we can see that here we see the difference in horizontal horizontal wise. So we can easily spot that here is the biggest difference at age class 3. And it would be nice if we could actually read what it means here. So this is of course infants 1, infants 2 and juvenile. But let's enhance the plot a bit. It doesn't is not so much related to the Kolmogorov Smirnov test as such, but it's a good uh, way of uh, representing that. So we make the same plot as we had before, but we don't want the axis to be plotted. And also I make the x limits to 0, 1. And I missed axis. No, it was actually access. I did a typo here. Ah, here. I forgot the C, of course. So it doesn't look so much nicer, actually, but we are at, at least have got rid of the axis. And I could immediately draw the x-axis back in. So axis 1, remember, always horizontal before vertical. So axis 1 is the x-axis. That's fine. We can live with that. But axis 2, the vertical axis, should have labels at equals to 1 to 6. And the names for the levels should come from the levels of the burial ages. And now we can see that infants 1. If I make that bigger, we can even read everything. And now I can add the lines for the witch graves again and look at the zoom and now we can easily spot that at juvenile this distance here is bigger but is this big enough to really speak from uh, to, uh, of a statistical significant difference for that we need to define the threshold and i can easily look at the actual values if i say uh, poor EDF minus rich EDF. And to make sure that there is no zero involved or no negative values involved because we are just interested in the absolute uh, differences, I could wrap that into an apps command to get absolute values. But in this case, it doesn't change so much. We can see that the biggest difference here is uh, 0 0.178 for something. So is this difference bigger than a threshold? We can mark this uh, observed maximum difference into the max for max difference. And I just select the maximum of these absolute differences. And now we have this value here stored for later. So to come to the threshold, um, we need a formula how we can um, identify the necessary threshold for that and I copy paste some R code in here that gives us the formula and oh, let's say I clean the plot first that might look nicer. So the threshold for the Kolmogorov Smirnov test is defined by a factor multiplied by the square root of the number of cases in the first class plus the number of cases in the second class divided by the number of the first class times the number of the second class. And this factor f here depends on what significance level we would like to achieve. So 0 0.05, the standard statistical significance level, then f would be 1.36. And for other levels, there are other uh, values for f available. So the higher this value is, of course, 
the larger the threshold will be and the bigger the difference must be to speak about a highly significant or a very high significant difference here. But we start, we stick to the standard statistical significance here and use that 1.36. Um, so we have to calculate our threshold according to this formula and we can get the numbers of uh, cases out of the table that we like we did before so table of burials dollar richness and then we get the poor and the rich graves so the first one defines the poor graves and the second one defines the rich graves m1 is that m2 is that so and now we have our values here and then we can just recreate the formula by saying 1.36 because this is our factor that we like to use times the square root of n1 plus n2 divided by n1 times n2 and because this is an addition uh, we have to encapsulate that into brackets so that it's executed first and we can just for similarity do the same here and this is the result of our threshold so it's one nine four something and we could put that into a variable that we call threshold and now significant is the result only if our observed difference exceeds the threshold that we have. So we can use again R to give us the answer. Is the max larger than threshold? And the answer is false. Just ignore the poor up here. So the maximum difference is smaller than the threshold, which means this test is not statistically significant. Although we can observe a trend here in the data, it also could come from a random patterning. So with 5% um, more than 5% chance, so we can't speak about a statistical significant result here. That's what the Kolmogorov Smirnov test is all about. Um, how to do that in R then from a practical perspective. So we use the command KS test and as always in R, every formula is, um, is also a variable. If I just run that, you can see here the, um, the code, how Kamogauf's Minot test is implemented here. And then I also can use the um, help to get here the help page. And it says that we so it performs one or two sample Kolmogorov Sunar test. We want to have a two sample test. In case of two sample tests, we need X as a numeric vector of data values and Y also a numeric vector of data values in case of the two sample test here. We don't want to compare two uh, standard distribution functions. We want to compare two different data sets. Okay, so we have to turn that our burial dollar h currently factor variable into numeric one and that's quite trivial because we have already ordered and defined the variables in a correct way so i can just use as integer because they are ordered in the right way the first level factor variable gets the value of one the second gets the value of two the third of three and so on and if I say as integer, I can see these values here. So it starts with all the ones that are infants two, then all the twos that are infants, infants one, sorry, and then all the twos that are infants two, all the threes that are juvenile and so on. We can use that directly as um, input for the Kolmogorov Smurf test. So I just add that to our burials, oops, sorry, burials. Uh, data set and I call that burial h num for numeric. And if I now look to that, you can see that here RDH 
classes given as numeric uh, values. And we can use that now for the Komarov test in R. So I want to test at x all the burials dollar $h num from those burials where burial richness equals to rich. So with that I get true or false in respect to if we have a rich grave or poor grave and only those are selected if I use that here in the uh, edgy brackets only those are selected where this is true. So I get only the values for the rich graves and if I make that poor here I get only the values for the poor graves. So now we have two vectors and we can feed them in as x and y into the ks test function. So ks test from that and that divided by a comma and here we go. So here is a warning because uh, the cast test can't uh, give perfect um, analytical p-values if we have uh, equal values in the, in the value tables here. So we have several ones and here also several ones and this is a draw. Uh, um, yeah, they are the same so we can't get real p-values, they are just approximated, but that's not a problem. We can see our d value, which we also had calculated as d max before, and we get a p-value here, and this p-value gives us 0 0.089, so nearly 0 0.09, which is higher than 0 0.05, which means this test is not statistically significant. Um, we also see how we um, specified the, the variables for the test here and that we have a two-sided test here so the difference is tested against if this richness if the rich graves were older or younger than the poor graves. Um, so with this result we got not a significant result here and we have to look for other interesting things to write and paper about. This was the komogov smirnov test, which is a um, non-parametric test for um, ordinal scaled variable. In the next video we will see the men with u test, which essentially has the same background or the same uh, purpose, also identifying a statistical significance between at least ordinal scaled variables. The thing is, um, as we have seen before in the plot, in the plot, in the other plot, so let's make that plot again. We compare here the form of the distribution, the shape of the distribution. And that's what the Komogov's test is doing, while the man with u test compares the, uh, the location of the distribution, so kind of the middle values of that. It is only applicable if the general shape of the distribution is similar. We, one, one could make some um, examples where it would show a statistical significant result, although there is none. The man with u test, because the shape of the distributions are too dissimilar. That's the downside of the man with u test. It's still a non-parametric test, but it requires at least that the um, distribution, the shape of the distribution, is comparable. Um, that's the downside. The, the benefit of that test is that it's in general it uh, has a higher test power, so it is better to identify statistical significant results. The Komogorov Smirnov test is more conservative. Um, that's why there might be situations where you would need both if the distributions have the same um, general shape, then the Menwitten U test might be the better test while the kolmogorov smirnov test is the real non-parametric version of that, so it doesn't require you to care about your data at all. I don't would like to say that, but it's really robust.